The Phantom Merry-Go-Round Among the pirate islands at the outer edge of Barataria Bay, the westernmost is Ile Dernière, now generally known as Last Island. For a little while it was the capital of the illegitimate empire of Jean Lafitte, the famous buccaneer who later moved to Grand Terre and became a picturesque hero at the Battle of New Orleans. Not long after the pirates had scattered, Last Island became a summer resort. Some of the most distinguished of New Orleans' Creole families built luxurious cottages there. An enterprising merchant erected an elaborate hotel called the Trade Wind, which was decorated by many towers and bordered by pillared galleries. A whole wing of this long and spacious building was devoted to a ballroom where an orchestra played nightly, and all the families from the cottages joined the hotel guests to dance the hours of darkness away. The season was at its height at the beginning of August in 1856. The summer residents congratulated each other that their island was cool, while the heat of New Orleans was almost intolerable. A strong north wind was blowing, and high waves raced in from the Gulf of Mexico to break in thundering surf upon the sand. Each day was bright and clear. On the ninth of the month came the first ominous evidences of possible disaster. Great dark clouds towered on the horizon, and the wind brought with it a roaring sound. Darkness came early that afternoon, and the sound increased. The islanders gathered at the ballroom, glad to divert themselves by dancing and forgetting the fears that stirred in their minds. Nervously, the ladies in their formal gowns looked out of the windows at the advancing waves, but soon the music and the gay rhythms of the dance captured their complete attention. When the gaiety was at its height, came a piercing scream. A girl had seen water spurt under the door of the ballroom and darken the shining floor. As some of the gentlemen raced toward the door, it burst from its hinges, and a resistless wave swept through the room. The struggling dancers heard a terrific crash, and the roof of the ballroom had blown away. Wave after wave followed, and the helpless humans, screaming and panic-stricken, were scattered by the seething waters. Those who fought their way out of the hotel saw whole cottages swept away from their foundations and bobbing crazily about. A small steamboat, the Star, had been snatched from her moorings and was blown up upon the island. It filled with water and sank on the site of a billiard parlor which had disappeared. A few of the victims of the storm fought their way to her hull and clung there throughout the night. Not far from the hotel stood a children's whirligig or merry-go-round. A group of men and women had fought their way to it, and they clung to the wooden rail above their heads. The wind increased its force and set the rail to circling. The terrified passengers kept desperate hold, their bodies hanging grotesquely as the rail went round. When the waters receded next morning, about two-thirds of the people on the island had lost their lives. Many were never found. But here and there on the wet sands lay corpses in odd, stiff attitudes. Almost a century has passed, since this great tragedy. But the fishermen of Barataria Bay say that even today, when chugging past Last Island in their little boats, sometimes on blowy nights, they see on its shores a vast hotel, its windows gleaming with light, and they hear dance music above the whistle of the wind. Sometimes, too, a boat crew reports that they have beheld by the light of the windows dark shadows moving slowly in circular parade, like human bodies riding a gruesome merry-go-round.